Hello, my crafty friends. I hope you are well. Corinne here from Corinne's Crafts. Just coming on because today is Tuesday, so that means it's Technique Tuesday. Well, what a lovely technique I have got for you today. It's been really simple. So what we've done is we've created a gorgeous background, a watercolour background, uh, or a partial watercolour background with our pinks and yellows, just our watercolour um, inks and then I've used coloured pencils to highlight and shade the flowers you know just giving them a little bit more definition and a little bit more um, interest um, yeah I thought this was really nice just added a sentiment a couple of pearls and it's all about the detail in the mats and layers I hope you like this it's going to be really really simple we're going to bring in our waterproof ink pads. We're going to bring in our colour pencils as well. And we're going to have so much fun with this. So love you to um, craft along with this one. Um, and let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, let's see how it's made. All right then. So there's two ways to do this background. You can either create your watermark, watercolour background first and then stamp onto it. Or if you want to have a bit more control over where you put your watercolour, you might want to stamp first and then put your background on. Now, I'm going to use this stamp set. This is um, a very old tattered lace one. It might even be Rare Earth, which was a brand with a sub brand within, you know, within that company. So I'm going to use this lovely flower. I think I used that one for a different project. So you'll have seen it before. But we're going to do the background first and then the um, stamping next. So I've got my water spray. I'm just going to give it a light mist. I will link to that bottle because somebody was asking me about that. Just giving that a little bit of a mist because it just helps. Now, you've seen when I do um, watercolour inking, I go from lightest colour to darkest colour first. I just find it easier. So ink on the mat and then we're going to put, I sprayed it with a bit of water. So I've got my card. And just on the side that I sprayed, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the ink like that. Then we need to get our heat gun and I need to give it a little bit of a blast. I've not dried up that ink. OK, so you'll see I've not dried it too completely, but I've dried up all the puddles. So next thing I want to do is just go in and pick up a little bit more because it's going to add a bit of intensity and a bit of shade. You can always add a little bit more water to dilute it down and then pick up a little bit more. And um, the other thing I do, I think I've got enough yellow now, is you can also blot it. Now, every time you do this, it's gonna come out slightly different. I just need to dry that a bit. Not perfectly dry, but fairly dry. I'm gonna come in with a pale pink. I don't know how much this will show up, but I just, I like the, I like the thought that I'm gonna add shades of pink in. So let's put a little bit of water on there, and then I'm gonna pick that one up. So this is why I wanted to make to dry in between so you can see that's sort of a little bit of a paler one so i'm going to just dry that off and now i'm going to go in with my darker pink so this is the one i really like it's a fuchsia I really like that sorry i should have said it was honey pot first pink tulip second and fuchsia third I forgot to say so i'm going to spray one half so i've got some darker and some lighter and then i'm just going to pick that up just across there i still want to see i don't want it to blot out all of that yellow so i'm going to just dry that i might just give that a little bit of a where it's got lots of puddles give that a right give that a dry okay so i'm just going to pick up a little bit now of the dark pink just to add it again adding the shades in i want to sort of mix and match just keep picking it up and if you've got some left over, for now, I'm going to just sort of wipe that away. But you could just get another piece of card, spritz it, and then pick it up even more. So remember, every time it's going to come out different. Okay, so I have done that and I've given a really good um, dry this time. Turned it over, dried it from the back as well as from the front. If it gets too crinkled and cockled, what you can do is put it on your plates for your die cutting machine. Bottom cut and plate. Then I would then be putting on your card. Then I'd put your rubber shim on top. Then you could just put in the rest of the plate. And I would actually probably put them all through and then put them through the die cutting machine and it will flatten it out lovely. But that's entirely up to you. 
Okay, so I've finished putting my colour on. Um, just remember, every time you do that, you're going to get different and they do dry a little bit paler than what you start with. So I'm going to get my stamping platform. You use whichever one you like. And then I'm going to find my stamp, which is just here. I'm going to lay that on. I just did that one before I put my magnet on so I could see where it's going to lay. And so that's going to come here. So it's going to come over there. I'm going to do my sentiments separate. You could, I have done in the past where I've done one and, you know, do them at the same time. So this is where you now need to use a waterproof ink pad. So you could use that one or, let's have a go with this one, my Ranger um, waterproof ink pad. Let's have a go with this one. Let's put that onto there. Oh, I can see that's really pop loads on there and then I'm going to stamp it over here I'm going to use my pressure tool I've had people message me saying that they've been picking these up and loving them um, for stamping they just add um, and also for doing the glue between the layers people have been using them look at that isn't that gorgeous right not quite enough yet I you know me I always like to stamp um, at least twice if not three three is a magic number for me so just pop that on i'm just going to make sure i get in the center and then pop that over there and then just press all over burnish that down let's have a look oh that's not bad at all i'm going to do one more just for look but actually i think the light and shade I'm seeing on that is just the light and shade within the stamp. But I'm just going to do one more for look because I like to do three. And the great thing is waterproof ink pads are waterproof straight away. You don't have to, you know, give them time um, to set or anything like that. So we can then do. There we go. Do you know what? I'm not going to have to do much colouring on this one. So take that stamp off and then I'm going to grab... Um, I've got happy birthday now. I really don't know what this one's from. It's just a sentiment set that I had. And we're not going to be able to use happy birthday on this one because there just isn't room. So you'll see the one I'm going to use in a minute actually has happy birthday on. But we'll just put just to say on this one because it fits a little bit better. Okay, so I am going to stamp again with my waterproof ink pad. Just because there's water in the project and I don't want my sentiment to, to you know, to um, to bleed. So let's get plenty of ink on that. Do you see how we tap when we ink up our stamps? We don't rub because you don't want to rub it over the top. You tap. I'll show you again. To get the best, you tap just like that. That's going to give you the best coverage on your stamp don't want to rub you're going to damage the surface of your stamp um, and you just and your ink pad there we go look at that loving that look at that that black ink is very black it's what you'd want isn't it it's a nice black ink let's take the sentiment off put it over there right there's no die cutting with this it's a really simple card to make so i just thought it'd be a nice one to do for our technique tuesday right so the next thing i want to do is bring in some um my aqua blend so these are a water um blendable pencils so i've got my landscapes because out of my landscapes and i forgot these the right way round i think i took my two greens out of here I think I've got spruce and verdant green. I think that was those two. And then out of my botanicals, I got, yeah, that would look right. I've got dandelion and rose. Petunia is another good one. I might take that one out. Okay, so how these work, you can work them in a couple of ways. You can either um, lay the colour down separately and then pick it up with a brush, or you can colour straight onto here. So let's colour straight onto here, and I'll show you the sorts of things you do. So I can come over the top of this. So all I'm doing, and there we go, see all the techniques that you've learned about darker in the darker areas, we're still going to apply. And we're just going to apply that colour on there. There we go. So we're still going darker down at the base where it's overlaid, and we're just coming up. So where that petal's over the top, it's going to be darker. But then most of the um, stamping is going to tell you where the colour needs to go. So you do that and we're not, you can see, we're not sort of doing 
blend you know um shading or anything like that so then i've got my paintbrush a little bit of water a piece of kitchen towel so you're going to find that really useful and then i'm just going to blend that out just like that over the top there and then onto here just on there so you can see how that's blending beautifully but because we've set that pink underneath it's not coming out as green as you otherwise would because the base color is pink but it's not bleeding out it's just acting as a base coat on there and i love that you're getting different shades because of the um different colors underneath so you'd pick up all the green bits and you might want to pick up bits like the um, stems and round the edges here i've got a nice stem down here you want to pick up these bits and these it's nice to do it with two different greens just to give a you know a contrast and again remember it's always going to be darker where the the buds over the top and then we can pick up a bit more water and then we can just blend that out so it is effectively water coloring but from a pencil instead of from paints which is just so much fun to do there we go what did i do i did down there didn't i i think that's all the green so the next thing i want to do is come in with my um pinks so i've only picked up the yellow just as a highlight in case i need it so what, all i'm going to do is where it where i've got the highlights i'm just going to go over now this one's come out quite a bit darker so i'm not going to be able to do too many highlights but it's just been able to add depth and detail if that's what you want so you just look at where the whatever stamp you're using because you might not be using this stamp you might be using a completely different stamp and that is absolutely brilliant um just enjoy the stamps that you've got we've talked about this a lot it's all about please use what you've got in your crafty stash we all just keep buying and buying and buying and forgetting to use what we've got um and the whole purpose of buying our crafty stash is to use it please please get out there and use your crafty stash so put that on there or you can be coming in with your other pink and just highlighting it if you want to if you want a little bit more yellow come in with the yellow I can over go over that pink with a yellow here if I wanted that just there. I can also come down here, look, with the yellow. So I can have sort of yellow tipped petals as well. So I'm really making the most. I think there, look, I need to come in with a bit of pink here. Can you see, all I'm doing is laying down the colour. There's no blending going off here at all. So please don't think, oh, I can't colour, I can't do you can you can when it's watercolor honestly you can all right so then but always make sure you've got your kitchen roll i'm just going to come in and, and activate this yellow a bit more i'm just going to activate the yellow if you don't sort of go over it what you'll find is it it sort of looks scratchy and um unblended when you've finished so once i've got some more yellow down i'm then just going to blend out pink oh you can really see it once you add the water look you can see where that pink is coming out so all i'm doing is just adding a little bit more control because the bits that we've added with the watercolor background the, we didn't have a lot of control over did we it was just wherever it sort of fell whereas now we're just controlling where those highlights go just bringing them out just reminds me of just um uh you know those magic paint pot books that you used to have as a child because you know you're just literally turning the um your little scribbles into light and dark i hope i didn't just get my head in there i apologize if i did but i was just trying to see what i could see and the more you wet it the more it's going to just activate that pink. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Right, I'm going to put that one to one side to dry. We're nearly there. That's all it takes. This is, oops, 
Get your pencils cold, that's not good for him. Um, that's all it takes. So let me just bring in the one that I've got that's nice and dry. And you'll see, it's cut, same stamp, but isn't that different? Much paler background and much paler image. You have to do whichever one you um, like. Oh, I'm torn now. I'm going to stick with this one because it's dry. It's going to make life easier. Okay, like I say, if you need to flatten it out, you can. I had it under my pencils because I actually coloured this one yesterday um, before I had time to come back and do this. So let's just add some collar glue. And I'm going to pop that on to a black layer. This is a lastminute.com layer. I wasn't going to have the black layer, but then I thought, yes, I want the black layer because it will just be the link between the blending and everything else that I'm doing. So I just decided at the last minute, I trimmed it down and made sure that my black layer fitted in as well. Right, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do it onto the white. I'm doing a few layers. I'm going to really try and bring this to life with my mats and layers as well. Do you know what? I think I've just suddenly thought that since I've been doing my YouTube channel, I don't know if I've ever put a bow on a card. Oh, that's it. I like, I'm gonna, that's going to make me have a look now. I don't know if any of my YouTube cards have had a bow on. Oh, I'm thinking now. I don't know. And I always used to put bows on my cards. So that will be that is such a transformation for me. I was known for my bows. He's put huge bows on my cards. Right, I'm just going to just, before I go any further, because look, I'm getting bits on the back. Let me just wipe this down. There we go. Okay, so got those layers. Then I've got my card base. So my card base was just from a piece of A3 trimmed down. And I've got some nice pink. So let's put that so i'm gonna i'm now working back from the bottom up it'll make sense in a minute why i've swapped and changed so white and then pink just get that all lined up then i'm going to go white again now this is actually i think this is my 350 gsm white card so it's a really thick card so there's going to be a lot of strength and rigidity in this card when it's finished so we're going up by or we're going down because we're going getting smaller by uh, an eighth of an inch each time now always you i started off doing qu um, um quarter of an inch gaps but now i do an eighth of an inch or thereabouts roughly eighth of an inch i just like the skinnier mats bit of lemon again all of these if you want to you can take the centers out to use them i should because like yesterday's card um not just yes yesterday's card had the gorgeous flowers on and you know they can all be made all those thrifty thirsty cards can be made using the bits in the centers of these um papers if you want to but just for speed i'm just putting that on to there there we go just blending out that glue and it's warming up that glue that really helps so i've got that now oh i think that would look nice wouldn't it i was going to go like that i might do that now just very slightly off that's a really really useful tip for anybody if you struggle with mats and layers if you find that that's quite hard to do to get it perfect put them at an angle Put mats and layers at an angle because if mats and layers are at an angle and they're not that you don't obviously have to go square with them. Yeah, if you if you struggle to do it square, then make a point of doing it not square. Right, because I'm going to do it at an angle. I need to just to bring my tape in a little bit. So just don't go right to the edges this time, tops and bottoms. And let's just do that in half and then go one across there one across there so that means that now when i do that it's not going to show i'm not going to do it on a massive angle i'm just going to do it at a little bit of an angle because obviously you have to have a bigger a slightly bigger box or envelope because you you know you've gone off the size of your card base because at the moment my card base is doo -doo -doo, six by seven and a half but obviously if i put this at an angle i'm gonna to have to just go a little bit bigger um so again i'm just going to put a little bit of glue I think my card yesterday when I was doing this, I was using my tacky glue for them just to do that. But not, you know, you just change it 
I just changed whatever comes to hand. And I'm just going to pop that on there. And actually, I've hardly gone off the um, card, have I? So I've still kept it within the area of the card. And the final thing I need to do, because I need to do this, of course, is just to put a couple of gems on here. Um, because we all know it just really, really lifts it, doesn't it? And we're just doing them totally random. One up there. Odd numbered. So number five can come. So I don't want it in a line with that. Don't want it in a line with that. Just there. And there you go. This is my Technique Tuesday on how to highlight the... Um, like a watercolour background using your aqua pencils. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. A really simple card. And you've seen it's not taken us very long to put together. Um, really quick and easy to achieve. The watercolour background has saved us a lot of time in colouring. OK, I hope you've enjoyed that. Nice and quick one for today for our Technique Tuesday. Um, yeah, but really good fun. I'd love to see some of your different backgrounds and different colourways that you could um, make with this. If you wanted to, you could mass that off and you could do a bit of splatting. You could also do um, a bit of stenciling over there. Lots of different techniques. Think of all the techniques that we've been looking at and you could, uh, you know, apply a few of those. So thank you for watching. I'll put some links down at the bottom. There'll be things like my spray bottle, my pressure tool. All of those will all be in links at the bottom um, and please don't forget to subscribe because I've tried to put up four videos every week for you to give you lots of crafty inspiration and please leave a comment I love to read your comments and sometimes it takes me a bit longer but I usually try to reply to them all um, thank you and if you've enjoyed this I've also put a link to my buy me a coffee page and thank you to everyone who has contributed to that that already it helps me to keep the channel running so thank you very much and until next time happy crafting everyone keep safe and i look forward to speaking to you again soon bye for now